Well, hello, my darlings, and welcome back to our channel. I am so glad you are here. Well, you may have guessed it. Yes, I am still in punishment. So welcome <laughs> to another episode of Scrapology 101, on which we'll be making a floating table number and seating chart centerpiece. I sure hope you'll stay tuned. For this project, you will need some flowers, any color, any type of your choosing. You will need three of these dry foam bricks. You will need some of these flower embellishments. You will need some crystal garlands, any design of your choosing. You will need a metallic silver paint marker. You will need some rhinestone stickers as well as some rhinestone letters. And you will need three panes of glass from an 8 by 10 frame. Of course, you will need your handy dandy tools. Let's get crafting. So the first thing we're going to do in an effort to create our project is we are going to create or rather decorate our panes of glass. The first thing you want to make sure since we're working with a paint marker is that your panes of glass are clean and all of the dust or any residue that was on the glass have been wiped off and that glass has been dry. Once you have done that, you're going to find your placement by deciding or determining determining where your flowers are going to overlap and then from there you are going to decide whether you are going to write your names freehand or you are going to find a font on your computer that you'd like to use and you're going to trace your names instead. I have opted to do this part of the project freehand and as you can see I'm using a paper towel to allow me or to guide me rather in writing my names straight across my glass. It matters or what I was going to say actually is how many names you're going to write on your glass is determined of course by how many people are going to be seated at your table. And so the purpose of my make-believe <laughs> seating guide today I'm going to have 10 names and I'm going to have two columns so five names on the left and five names on the right well now that I have finished writing my names down on my pane of glass it is now time to decorate what is going to become the other side and to do this I'm going to be using these rhinestone letters that I found and I'm going to be placing them again center mass of my pane now to do this I'm going to take my tape measure I'm going to measure my pane of glass and as you can see the measurement of that glass is coming in roughly at about nine inches now if I am going Going to place the word table directly in the middle I am thinking about five letters going across and for my start letter I am going to be placing then that T at just about two and a half inches to two and three quarter inches and making sure that I'm spacing out my letters equidistantly one from the other in an effort to get to the other side and hold on to some semblance of centeredness, if I will, <laughs> on that glass. So now that you see how I have done that to ensure that my letters will be centered, I will complete that part of the project off camera. So here we have our word table that's slightly askew, but what I'm going to show you now is how to make the number one simply by using rows of rhinestones. Now, of course, this option is entirely up to you if you 
prefer to go to one of the craft stores and buy a larger number to simply place on that glass that is entirely an option that of course you can use however if you are thinking about trying to stay within a budget that you have already set for yourself you will be able as well to make your numbers using loose rhinestones now these rhinestone tapes I found at the Dollar Tree many, many, many months ago. And as such, I've had them sitting there all this time. Of course, even if you are not able to find these at the Dollar Tree, these will be able or rather available at any craft store. And again, like I said, the choice would be up to you whether you would want to Freeform these using lines of rhinestone or simply purchasing numbers. So as you can see, I'm just going in peeling off row by row and placing them down. And what I will have to do off camera is simply take a ruler or my fingers and push those rows together to ensure they are straight. So here we have our pane of glass that we have embellished with the word table as well as with our number one. And what we are going to do now is embellish it further with our floral embellishments. Now this is going to solve two purposes. Of course it is going to add some extra bling to your piece but it is also going to obscure the edges of this glass so that your guests will not be in danger while handling it. Now if you notice I am going to be starting my placement of my flower embellishments about two or rather one and a half to two inches from the top and ending about one and a half to two inches from the top or the bottom, I can't remember which I said first, of that pane of glass. The reason why we're doing that is because we do not want to obstruct with our floral embellishment, anything that will eventually be covered by flowers. And so, as you can see, there's empty glass on the bottom where we're going to anchor that glass into our foam. And likewise, there's empty glass on top. Now, as you can see, the option for this is also lining the back of this glass with your floral embellishments. However, I do not think that it is necessary because the underneath of these floral embellishments are very clean and polished in and of itself as well. So now that we have finished embellishing both of our glass pieces what we are about to do now is start to build up our foundation now in order to do this you are going to need two of your foam bricks as well as your third pane of glass what we are going to do here now is we are going to anchor our panes of glass into that foam. So if I am going to start with table one being on the left hand side, what I'm doing here is I'm placing that glass in on the diagonal and making an etching where I'm going to want that glass to sit. Additionally, I am going to take my other pane of glass and I'm going to force it in on the diagonal as well to see just how close or just how balanced I can get these two panes of glass situated in their respective pieces of foam. Once you have done that, what you are going to do now is you are going to ensure that the tops of those panes of glass meet just like the top of a pyramid or the top of your roof does. Once you have done that, we're going to start with one of our bricks 
We're going to take our hot glue gun. We're going to place some hot glue on the bottom of that foam. Notice we have not covered the bottom of this foam with black felt today, but we are going to glue this directly on to our glass making sure that once we have, we are leaving enough space on the both sides for one row of that floral embellishment to sit equally without hanging off of our piece. Once we have secured our first brick of foam, then it is simply a matter of doing the same thing, following the same steps, placing that hot glue on the bottom of that foam and making sure that your two foam pieces are, how can I say, equal or rather, thank you, parallel one from the other on either side. Now, if you look very carefully, you can see that the brick that I just put down is way too far out on the front side. And so my two pieces are not equally distanced apart. And so what I'm gonna have to do off camera is rip this up, lay it down one more time to ensure that it has been set correctly. So here we have our piece so far with our two pieces of foam that have been anchored down. And the one that I told you I was going to fix off camera, I literally had to pull it, drag it off of that glass to ensure that I would have been able to place it down securely parallel to the other side. Now that we have secured our foam onto our glass, we are going to place some hot glue in that etching that we made and this is going to allow that pane of glass to be secured into that foam and not run the risk of falling down during your event. So as you can see, placing my hot glue just above that etching that we made and then forcing that glass down into that space and holding it for a few moments while that hot glue sets that glass into place. We are going to do the same thing on the other side off camera and then once we have, I will return to tell you what's next. So here we have our piece that is one step away from being almost put together. And as you can see, what I'm showing you is that that glass has been safely secured into that foam using our hot glue. What we are going to do now to top this off is we're going to be placing an additional styrofoam brick on top of our piece. And to do this, we are simply going to place that foam brick atop of that glass pane, make the etching that we need to guide us where that glass is going to sit, and then we're going to take our scissors and pretty much just as I'm doing here, running that scissors through that etching to make it, what can I say, a valley, open it up some more so that you, as you can see right there, it is open and those two panes of glass will be able to sit or fit securely into that space. Once you have created the space that you will need to secure both of your glasses, what we are going to do now is pretty much the same thing we did with the bottom two foams. We'll go ahead and fill that valley with some hot glue copious amounts of it and then turning that foam brick over being very careful not to burn yourselves my darlings from that hot glue place those two panes of glass into that slot 
apply some pressure make sure that that glue has been engaged with those two pieces of glass and then allow it to dry for a few moments while that is drying what we are going to do now is simply take our floral embellishments measure them as to the length of the glass which is the base of our piece and then we are going to apply these floral embellishments pretty much the same way we did for the ones that have been attached to our glass. So just cutting out the length that I'm going to need, which is going to cover up the entire length of the side of that frame. And then placing bullets of hot glue one by one behind each one of those flowers and placing it on the glass being careful not to burn yourself of course my darlings and continuing the process until you get all the way back to the other side so here we have our piece that has been built up in its entirety and now it is time for the fun part. Now as you can see I'm holding that by its tippy top and I'm lifting it. Both sides of that glass has been securely embedded into that styrofoam and so I am confident that this piece will withstand an event. Now if you are like me and you like your crystal garlands all I'm doing here is placing some crystal garlands or one strand of crystal garland on each side of this piece of course this part is optional whether you would like it long like I have mine or a little shorter the choice is exactly up to you now what we're going to do is embellish our piece with our flowers and again like I said in the intro the type of flowers and the color scheme is entirely up to you but I'm going to be using these red roses as well as a few white hydrangeas to put this entire piece together when you're placing your flowers please make sure to do so on the diagonal which is going to run in line with how we have placed that glass into that foam and in addition it will allow you to save some space with your florals so I'm going to continue this process off camera I'm going to clean our piece stage it and then I'll be back to show you our finished project and here you have it my darling our floating table number and seating chart centerpiece isn't this absolutely darling listen I think I would have to say that my favorite part of this project would have to be the transparency of it all I simply love how this piece seems to be floating on air or scratch that rather floating on flowers this is absolutely stunning and as you can see as we go around I have placed in the middle of our piece three flameless candles to set the mood of your event whether it be luxurious whether it be fantastical whether it be romantic the candles will provide that extra touch of excellence and if you notice with the names of our guests I have placed a rhinestone on the first letter of each guest this adding once again to the glamorous feel of this piece. My darlings, I think I would have to say that we have nailed yet another project. And so, if you have found any value in this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up as well as leave me a comment in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. Tell me, my darlings, my wedding planners, my wedding coordinators, my rental um, companies, 
Tell me, if you were to create this, for what, for which event would you use this piece? I am curious to know. To my Danny's darlings, I would just like to take the time to tell you thank you for all of your love, your questions, your comments, your feedback. But most importantly, thank you for all of the encouragement that you have sent my way thus far. Please know that none of it is wasted and I appreciate each and every one of you. To those of you, however, who may not yet be Danny's darlings, we would like to humbly encourage you to join our ever-growing community of DIYers as we learn from and craft with each other on a weekly basis. And if you do support subscribe to our channel today, please be sure to click that notification bell to ensure that you will be made aware whenever any of our videos are published as well as whenever we go live as a community. So my darlings, before I sign off from today's video, I would like to leave you with the motto to our channel, which is simply this. Why buy when you can DIY? And so, my darlings, my loves, until next time, I say to you, please, please, please take care of yourselves for me. Know that I love you all. <laughs> bye now.